previous uh, video, uh, we had a look at how to create a form where you could update the fields using advanced custom fields, and in this case, a repeater, which then updates the product options and then totals the product price with the product options. And that would then be included in an email, but no payment was part of that transaction. So in this uh, video, we'll have a look to see how we can add the transact transaction side to that. So now if we go to the next page, you'll see that here we have uh, two payment methods listed. We have the uh, payment amount and we have the item which is listed here. And I'll show you how we set all this up and then we have an additional space for a message. So if the person was to make this transaction and we're just going to go with the offline payment and we had a message in there and we submit the form you'll see that what they would receive then is an email that we've set up which has the main product which is that's the product name and the price then we had the additional options that they ordered then we have the payment summary which is the total the payment method the payment status and then once again just a summary of the order and then we have the customer details so the the order details are summarized here at the top with the main product and the options and that's just more of a receipt to say that that amount was paid. And then we have the customer details at the bottom. So what happens on the screen after making the payment is you then receive an order summary to say, this is the product name, these are the product options, and that's the total that was paid. And then we also have the payment method and the fact that it's pending. So you can customize this screen as well as the email to some extent to make it easier for your client to understand that they've in fact made a payment. To set that up, you'll see that the only difference between the, the previous form where we did the updates and this one is the fact that you have the payment integration. So to have a look and see how we set up the payment integration, the first thing that you would need to do inside your Fluent Forms is head over to Global Settings. And inside global settings, you will see that you have a option here for payment. And in here, you can enable the payment module. So in this case, the first thing to do under general is to activate the enable payment module. Put in your business name, the address, if you have a logo. Then to have a look at the currency that you'll be accepting. In this case, we've just left it at uh, dollars, but you can pretty much select from the currency of your choice. Under payment methods, we um, have several op options. So you have Stripe, PayPal, Test Payment, Molly, RazorPay, Paystack. So the, the, the one that we activated was the PayPal account, and the second one was the Test Payment. And we've just done this for purposes of the demonstration. With PayPal, there is a bit more customization that's required. Um, and that's for the, um, if you're going to look at a subscription payment. But ours is just a straight payment that we, we're doing. And then we have this test payment. So that's pretty much all that you have to do to set up. Um, when we look at the forms, you'll see that there are some additional fields that are now available to you. So if we look at the form that we've used for this particular product, you'll see that we now have, on the right-hand side, we now have this payments field. And it's in the payments field that we have some additional fields that we can add to our form to facilitate the payment. Now, what didn't change is we've kept the product price field the same, and we've kept the product options price uh, pricing the same in the way that that integrates with advanced custom fields and the repeater. What we did change, however, um, is, is um, on the second page in the form, and that is where we add the payment methods that are available. Now to show you how that would work is we would go to input fields, we'd look at the um, payment methods and you just drag that across and it'll automatically pick up on the payment methods that you have selected in the settings. There's nothing else that you need to do there. In the custom payment amount in order to get the total, what we've done here is we've used the enable calculation option then to then add the custom input price and the product options. 
So that then totals up the options and the product price and comes up with the payment amount. So instead of calling that custom payment amount, maybe what we want to do is call that uh, total payment amount and product plus options. So we have that information there now and then the product summary that you see there now this is also one of the additional input fields and you'll see that it's simply called payment summary and you just drop that in there I'll delete the old one so there you have your payment summary and of course you can change uh, you can edit that as well so we click on that and payment summary so that's pretty much all that you need to do and then when you submit the form it automatically picks up that this is a payment and runs the calculations and redirects according to the payment method so just to have another look at that then is we head over to the form and you would then select your options click on next we'll select the offline payment because we don't really want to do the whole PayPal thing we put in our message there and then we submit the form and you'll see now that an email is automatically generated and in that we have hello to the customer the main product the additional options then we have the payment summary so the order ID the date the total payment method the payment status here we have the order details so total payment amount which is product plus options and there we have the uh, main product the additional options that's how that amount is put together the customer details and then just a link back to the product that they purchased when we have a look at the message on the screen it now says that's the product name the product options that were chosen that option that option and then here we have a summary of the order on that date that amount of money was paid and the payment method and pending so if we wanted to add some more items here into the order summary so for example we wanted to include the product uh, price as well so in order to do that we'd head over to our editor and now we'll go to settings and integration of that form and in the form settings you'll see here that when the transaction is submitted this is the information that comes up the product name and then the product option so here we could include a new line and call that product price and now to get the product price we simply go to the short codes the input options and we look for product price and that would include the product price in terms of adding the um, product options that works in the same way and then here we have payment summary but we have a whole lot of other payment fields so here we can do the payment status the payment total payment method uh, so let's just add say the uh, payment total and what we'll do is we'll add that first and then the summary and I will save the settings we'll head back to the website we'll refresh the page I'm now going to choose a couple of other items we'll enter that we'll say offline payment we'll put in our message we'll submit the form and now you'll see that the email is triggered with the information as it was but here now we have the product name the product price now is included there we have the product options the three options that were chosen there we have the uh, total payment and then there we have the payment summary so if we wanted to put a heading in front of that item we'd simply head over to the um, the form settings and in front of the payment total we can then insert total and the payment the total will be displayed what we can also do now in front of the product price is just add in the currency symbol and a space 
and if we wanted to we could also then make these items bold and you also see that with the product options it splits over two rows so maybe what we want to do is just include that under product options like that so that we don't have it running over two lines now when we refresh our page we can select our the options head over to the next screen uh, we're going to go with the offline payment and we'll submit the form no change on the email but now in the form that's displayed you'll see that we now have the product name the product price the product options now displayed underneath the heading there we have the product total and there we have the summary of the the payment the other thing that we can check in the back end now is that we can then go over to global settings and we can now look at payments and you'll see under payments these are the payments that have been made you'll see that one was PayPal these are all the offline payments in the email that is sent to the client so if we have a look at all forms and you'll see this one has an icon now to show that it's a payment form and edit there we have our form but under settings and integration under the email notification here we can also create and set up our email with the various items so we had the main product we had the additional options we had the payment summary we had the website link now what we can also do uh, once again here is maybe we want to create you know include a summary of all the data submitted and to do that we can go to add short codes and under input options at the bottom we can add all data what we might also want to do is have a look at additional payment information so under payment details here is where we can put in the payment receipt the payment summary uh, order items table uh, payment status so the order items table so let's have a look at that now because we've pulled in the items from the checkbox from the tick box field we've included them uh, here and if we look at the we'll just put uh, um, items table and we're going to paste that in all right so let's save that We'll head over to the website we'll refresh the page there's no limit here on how many submissions can be made let's do those two in fact let's add a third option uh, let's enter the details we'll select offline payment we'll submit the form and now when we look at our email you'll see that there we have the main product the additional options there we have the payment summary with order details here we have the items table and you'll see that the items table is actually the same as the table already included in the order details so we don't need to include that and then here we have the complete summary of the form as it was submitted and that would look like the standard form submission of course then in your response email you might want to include something along the lines of uh, bank details if it's going to be for an offline payment so bank name maybe the branch and maybe you need a swift code um, and you probably need An account number so you can include all of that information here um, inside your your email um, products will be dispatched on proof of payment so there we have um, that update now if we go and have another look here and we refresh
you'll see that we can now <coughs> enter the details and that that information is now included in the email. So there we go, products will be dispatched on proof of payment. Here's the main product, those are the options. Here's the payment summary, the order details, customer details, the items table we can remove, and there's a summary of the form. So just something for the customer to get with all the information. And of course, you can send that same form to admin with a summary of the order details. So just one other thing to have a look at when it comes to setting up your form. Now, what you'll notice here is we have two payment methods. If I was to remove one of those, now I don't remove it here in the form, I actually need to remove it under global settings. So in global settings, oh, that's not entirely true. What I can do is come into the option here and I can just untick the one that I don't want. Or I could disable globally under the global settings. In this case, maybe we'll just do that. Now what you'll notice on the form, as a result of doing that, and the fact that there's only one payment method, now when I move over to next, you see there's no option here to select the payment method. And the reason for that is because there's only one payment method, there's, no, there's nothing for the client to select. So just the one a payment method is used and it's automatically applied to the transaction. So just to show you, I submit the form. In the email, you'll see in the summary, it will actually say payment method offline. And when we have a look here, you'll see that once again, the payment method is offline. And that's because there's only one payment method selected. That's how easy it is to integrate the payment option into your form. So I hope you enjoyed that and thank you for watching.